Hey y'all, <laughs> it's Fix It With Fran where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. I will apologize a little bit because I think my voice is kind of raspy, but we're going to do a video that is not air gardens, although I'll try not to mention them too much, although they're not in this room, so that won't be that hard to do. Uh, I mentioned before that I was going to tell y'all a little bit more about some of my other plants and some of my other little groupings. I was actually in this room taking care of some of these plants, um, hanging up some little makeshift curtains because I am in Louisiana for those of you who haven't seen my channel before. And we're dealing with the winter weather down here and a lot of wind and things. And um, again, for those who haven't seen the channel, we moved into this home back in September. And so just still getting settled, you know, having... Uh, Again, if you don't know, I had COVID back in December, was sick, got diagnosed with bronchitis after I had COVID. So still trying to get settled, trying to get unpacked, trying to do all the little things to turn a house into a home, so on and so forth, along with remodeling, get settled, and really just you know, making all those little changes to make it something that's really custom to us and our family. That being said, part of that for me means plants. Um... And I'm in this room, which is actually the room that I quarantined in. Um, and some way, somehow, my daughter, who is now 17 months old, which is crazy, um, never got sick with COVID. We had her tested twice. Um, she was maybe three times even able to go back to daycare after that. My husband never had any symptoms, never was sick, got tested twice um, and had negative tests had what he felt like was a false positive because he went back a day later and got tested and it was negative. So again, just monitoring yourself, knowing your symptoms, just anyway, that's an aside because that's not what this video is about, houseplants. Um, but for me, uh, I guess it's kind of related because just knowing myself, um, being in a room with when this is not covered, is a whole lot of light that comes in. This is a north-facing window, but because there's not really any trees blocking this window, it still gets a whole lot of sun. It's an open golf course behind this window so again whole lot of sun whole lot of open space um, I made sure I opened the windows opened the blinds uh, got some fresh air got some sunlight that was really important for me and my recovery um, I kind of have this space over to my right so that you can see some of my plants that are set up here um, and there's some dust in the background and I want you to know there's not any illicit activities taking place here. I had an issue with some fungus now. So we're going to talk about that a little bit and what I do to manage that because... <sighs> I hate fungus ants, but sometimes when you get your plants from the big box stores, as I tend to do and have shared on my channel before, you got to deal with them. So what do we do? Um, one thing I have, I'll just get started, start at the very beginning. I have these alocasia poly that I love. <laughs> Sorry, if you get to know me, you'll know I sing, I have a sing songy voice and when I get excited, it goes high pitched, not to say that I am anywhere near true soprano anymore in my life. Um, so this allocation poly, let's see if I can get it a good view, is still doing really well, although there's some yellowing here, some browning. Part of that may be from the dry air from us running the heat. There's a vent that's not too far from where I am right now. Um, I did have to make these go through a period of um, underwatering because, like I said, I was trying to deal with some fungus gnats. I really may have had to just give them a little bit of a drought because... With fungus gnats, and I'm not going to try to act like a true aficionado, but I do know a little bit of things, so I'll try to share that with you. When you're dealing with fungus gnats, they thrive in moist environments. So one way of trying to deal with them is to just make your plants go through a period where you don't water them as much as you might regularly. Um, so sometimes your plants have to suffer a little bit, but anything like alocasia poly, um, you know, they like humidity. They like, um, a moist soil. So you just give them a little bit of time where you know that you're going to have to sacrifice some leaves, but that later on when you get your plant healthy, when you get your soil back healthy, that you'll be able to promote some new growth. So even here, you see, I have some younger leaves that have come out and they're doing well just because these older leaves are going to drop off anyway. Um, but I also transferred these so I can show you the pot that these originally came in. I think I have some sitting nearby. So yeah, these are the pots they came in from hashtag Lowe's. Oh yeah, not sponsored, not endorsed. I paid my what eleven ninety eight for these, and I got three because I felt like once I got them, that my mom would come and visit and be like, I like that, I want one. So I just prepared to give her one. So I wanted two, and I got a third one to give my mom. Keeping it real. Um, 
they like high light, which is why I have them directly in a window, medium water, um, temperature above 50 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, what does it say, fertilizer every two to four months, and it's supposed to be a plant that helps to clean the air. And then there's here, um, you can get more information by texting a number for Lowe's. Um, so this is a pot, but there was another one. I may have moved it somewhere else. Oh, here's one. Because I like to take these strings and I'll set them up on different pots. But they came with these little, um, I think these are nylon, maybe. I think they're usually synthetic fibers because that will uh, prevent mold and mildew when it's a synthetic fiber. But they're these self-wicking pots. And they'll be in a tray that at the store, like the whole tray is, just has water in it. So they're able to draw up water as the plant needs it. And inside the pot, if I can show you, oh, I'm going to make a mess in here regardless. This little pole sticks into the soil. Here we go. Here's a better angle. This little pole sticks into the soil that is um, that it's planted in and allows it, again, to draw up the water that it needs so that the plant stays watered. Now, I kind of laughed at it when I first saw it because I've seen people in groups be like, I don't like that. What is it? Why is it in there? I looked at it like, oh, this is so that the employees don't have to worry about watering the plants as much. One person comes, they water the tray. Boom, boom, the plants are done. They take care of themselves. Let's be real. But at the same time, for those of us who like to bring these plants home, sit them inside a nice cover pot and just water it that way, you're helping me out. So I was kind of mad when I had one like this that I picked up. And it didn't have a string. Really? So I went and I had some pots that I believe I got um, for review that are like this. So you'll see all of my little allocations are now repotted in these kind of pots. And I can drop the link in my more fungus man. <clears throat> so as you see, I'm still in the middle of that battle. But I like these pots and I repotted my little pollies. And it may be that this was one that was on a higher up shelf. So I didn't treat this one with the diatomaceous earth. But I will be after this. Um, anyway, back on topic. This has this little tray inside the pot. And it's basically just like a little raised shelf. So you put this in the bottom of your pot. You put your soil and whatever you're planting in here. And then when you water it, it has that little shelf at the bottom. So there's a reservoir where water can collect. So what happens is that as the soil and everything settles and your roots will eventually grow down into the pot, the roots are able to draw up the water as it needs or as the plant needs it. So it doesn't necessarily do the same as that string. But what I did for one of the plants is that I took the string out, put it in the dirt and then let it sit so that it's able to do the same thing that it was doing in that original pot is just draw up the water. So at some point, of course, when I repot, I'll see if it needs to come out or if it needs to be replaced. But again, because it's a synthetic fiber, it should be able to last. Now, again, I'm not saying that's something you should necessarily do unless you're like me. And if you follow the channel for a little bit, you know, I like to experiment. Try and see if it works. It's keeping my plants alive, despite the fungus and ants. Um, and the other thing that I'm going to do is, uh, I'm jumping ahead, but that's how I do. I put in those uh, electric plugs, that little bug zappers. I told myself if the diatomaceous earth didn't work, I was going to put a plug in here because... I haven't been bothered by the fungus gnats, which is what was happening at the very beginning. Like I'd be watching TV at night and I would notice them flying on the wall. I cannot stand that. But so I thought I had gotten them all mitigated as far as the issue. But apparently there are some little persistent ones, maybe because I watered one of the plants yesterday. Or like I said, one of these polys was up on a high shelf and I didn't realize that I didn't treat it with the diatomaceous earth. So maybe they were up there just wetting the wings, but we're going to get them under control. So that's one of the polys. I just uh, keep it in here, sometimes move it into the bathroom, let it be in there whenever I um, run the shower or take a shower. I, Whenever I got them to, these apparently um, as I've seen in some of the groups that I'm in, folks have a problem with them with spider mites. I cleaned these off, and so I guess that's maybe another reason that it's really shiny. I cleaned them off when I initially purchased them. Um, not really with the leaf shine so much, but I um, cleaned them with, uh, just sprayed them because I've heard folks say that they had issues with spider mites. If I get a plant that I know has 
a potential for problems with spider mites or may even be infested with spider mites and I, they're just too small for me to see with the naked eye, I'll spray them down with the alcohol solution. As I understand it or as I've been told, alcohol will not harm the leaves of the plant um, and I do wipe it down right away. I've even used like the spray um, hand sanitizer because that's also usually like a 73 or 80-ish percent uh, concentration of alcohol, not like this 90-some percent like you get in a straight alcohol bottle. Uh, I spray that down and then wipe it off right away. So I haven't had any issues to my knowledge with spider mites on these. I've had spider mites show up. Uh, spoiler alert for those of you that had been following my growth of my pineapples in the Aero Gardens. So sorry, y'all. I, I guess I was going to end up talking about um, the Aero Gardens regardless. I ended up with dang on spider mites, I think, from a plant that somebody gave me. I might have mentioned that in another video, so apologies if I said that already and you already knew. They did not die. I caught it early enough. And like I said, this little area is like powdered. Oh, no. Like the office, when I saw those spider mites in there, it looks like something straight up out of Scarface. And I have no regrets because I was not going to lose my pineapples. So, Alocasia Polly. Love it. Um, now this plant right here, I have two of them. It's my what is it, red stem philodendron. Although when I got this, I actually got this from our botanical gardens here in New Orleans. The stem wasn't red then. And as you can see, it's not very red now. And I felt like it was a lighting situation because it's supposed to be part shade to full shade. So initially when I put this in the room, I put it across the across the room in a very like part shade low light situation as I understood it didn't make it happy um then I moved it back closer to the window but kind of over to the side I'm sitting on like my old school trunk that my grandmother gave me when I left for college it got a little redder like you can see here this light is kind of bright so if I move it away you can kind of see it's similar to the red of my shirt but it's still not like when I looked at photos of it online, it's like red, red, like uh, what's the word? Like cranberry red, like crimson red. And I liked it for that reason. Although I will say when I got this from um, City Park at the Botanical Gardens here in New Orleans, there was only one leaf. So at least it's kind of happy to the point where I got multiple leaves. I don't know. I'm trying. So, and it hasn't died, and it looks like it's actually, there's another sheath here, and I'm getting a tiny new growth, if you can see, yeah, that's poking out. And I think I may have mentioned I got two of these, so the other one, like, I got this again because I looked at the potential of these plants. Um, and when I looked at them online, because I was at the city park with uh, my husband's aunt, and I was like, oh, I, I went really to meet her because that's kind of our thing. We go to the park. We go to Cafe Du Monde. We'll get a cup. Even with COVID, I think because of COVID, this was kind of like our outing and what we would do just to get out of the house and, and enjoy the park and, and socialize a little bit. Um, so I was there. And I was kind of like, well, I want to get something because I told myself I would at least get like a plant or two. And at that point, I wasn't really getting anything for the yard because I knew we were going to be moving. So a house plan it was going to be. And when I saw this, I thought it was interesting. And then when I looked at it online, I was like, oh, this really has some potential. And, you know, anything that you can eventually propagate is always fun. So loved the leaves, loved the character of it. And again, like if you look, there's some really deep red parts. And this is all diatomaceous earth because we were going to get rid of these fungus gnats. So nothing's coming out of here. Like a lot of times if I have a plant, I'll like blow gently on it. I don't think these are the problem. I think that one that came from off the bookshelf is the culprit. We're going to dust it down. Um, back to this plant. Yeah. I love the leaf. Really unique. I just like the green. Greenery speaks to me. It sparks joy. And a new leaf coming out of this sheath here. This one is got some really curly cute stuff going on. But it's cute. I gotta find a situation that makes it happier. Maybe it needs to go downstairs. I'm thinking maybe in our game room. That's the kind of shadier area that we don't open up the windows as much. Let me try. What else? Nothing too exciting in this situation right away. I had some plants that I moved across the way. Another alocasia poly. They look the same. I'm not gonna change your life to see a spider plant that's been mostly happy in here. Hmm. 
Uh, it's not putting out any babies, though. But it mostly happy. And I had never grown those before. I think someone gifted me that or I traded somebody for it. Now, this one, oh, we have a lot of water going on. I think this is. Don't you love it when it says that? Tropical plant. What am I supposed to do with that? I believe this is a. I don't even know. Sometimes I look at it and I think it's a silvery and. Or a splash. Uh, it's splashy to me in some places. Now, some of that is diatomaceous earth, and I'm going to have to wash my hands. Um, I think it's just a uh, silver. I can't remember. I always have to look at the guide. But it's been really happy here because when I got it, it wasn't trailing. And I forget the rule. I think when it starts to give me the little lease like this, it's not getting enough light. It wants a higher light situation. I feel like if I put it on a pole, it would give me some larger leaves. So we may try that. But I'm just excited because, like I said, when I put it in this little cover pot, because it's still in the nursery pot, because that's how I roll. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Here we have roots coming up. Uh-oh. We got roots coming out. Keeping it real. So, it's happy, it's still growing, but I'm going to need to repot this for sure. I hadn't checked that one, y'all, so we're getting it. I literally was just sitting here checking these plants and about to repot some stuff. As I said, having had COVID and being sick, some of this normal deep care repotting kind of stuff, I hadn't done. So, when I was starting to do it, I said, oh, this might be a good thing to show folks so that you can see I do stuff other than just the arrow gardens. All right. And this one is trying to escape this pot anyway, so maybe we'll repot this. I love repotting stuff to give away to folks, so maybe we'll repot this and make it a giveaway for somebody. Um, this one right here, let's see. Okay, this one right here was actually a gift that I received after I recovered from COVID. This is my philodendron Brazil. This is my first Brazil. I never had a Brazil before this. And, huh, I hadn't named this one. And now that I think of it, all the plants that I've shown you so far, I hadn't named. I'm usually, I'm one of those folks that names my plants. Which is so pretty. She has a little bit of a bruised leaf there that I'm gonna have to prune off. I just wanted to give her some time. But since, in the time that I've had this plant, as you can see here, I'm getting a new sheet. And it's starting to trail a little bit more. It's been really happy. Now, I've been resisting the urge to snip this and put it in water and clip myself a new little baby for another pot. But I think if I did, it wouldn't look too... I like when plants have a little character, like when you let it kind of trail a little bit. And on the bookshelf, it kind of looks like this when it's sitting. I like how that looks. So I don't really want to cut it yet because then I feel like it'll just look meh. Yeah. I'm going to let that hang. Let that hang out a little bit. And I need to clean off that shelf. But yeah. I like how she's chilling out right now. I've got to think of a name for her. So this is actually a former orchid pot that I'm getting back into my orchids now, so I'll have to show you those. I have like three that I rescued. I may post a video where I went shopping and um, got them from my local Lowe's or one of the Lowe's that I go to. Uh, but anyway, uh, I was out of the mood for orchids when I decided to just put this in this orchid cover pot. But I like to have the orchid pots that have the aeration on the sides. I have yet to master orchids, but I'm working on it. But I feel like I need to give them the space for the roots to breathe because... I get to, to be an overwaterer, and I feel like if, if my roots can't breathe in an orchid pot, I'm already in trouble. That being said, back to this. Just a regular old golden pothos. But I like to. She's happy. She's putting me out some new little sprouts. I love grain, if you can't tell. 
I'm gray. Uh, I'm a November baby, so we'll let that speak for itself. Um, but she's also giving us some golden variegation there. And a new little trindle, little trail. She's pretty happy. Let's see what else we got going on. <laughs> so these are some that, like I told you, when I was dealing with the fungus nets, I was not doing as much watering. But these arrowhead plants, I this is my first time really growing these, and I have two of them that I got from I think Lowe's. Let's see, I can't tell. Uh, might have been a Home Depot. Oh, got some roots coming up. Oh, I just broke that root. Mm. Got some roots starting to come at the bottom. So they're happy. Now I gotta repot. Don't you hate it? But they have a little bit of dry spots here because same thing going on with the fungus gnats. Again, I knew I was going to have to sacrifice some leaves and some foliage and all that. Um, and when I mean sacrifice some leaves, I mean I was going to deal with some dry spots, sacrifice some foliage. Some of them just gave up the ghost entirely because these do like to kind of be consistently moist, which is why I liked the idea of leaving these inside the nursery pot and letting these self-wicking... Um, cords or the self wicking what's the word all right covid brain come on these self wicking i guess cords or ropes is the right word strings ah. letting them just do their thug fizzle because i didn't want to risk over watering them and i wanted to just let the plant take up water at its own pace um i like these too because i am an aka and to me they just had some nice hues of pink and green so these have been over here too. And this has just become its own little microclimate of sorts going on on this shelf. Let's see. This is not where these things were. I just tried to, try to space everything out and give everything its own little place. I tried to space everything out and give everything its own little place. Because I can already mumble as it is. So I'm pretty sure you, you might not have heard most of that. Um... This is my little watering can. I'm 99% sure this was a product review that I got from Amazon. And it needs to be cleaned off as my hands are now covered with dust. Um, yeah, there's another one of these, but it's over out of my reach right now. So I'm not even worried about getting it. Let's see what else I have going on. And as I often tell y'all, the good, the bad, the ugly. We got an ugly plant coming up next. But I'm just going to show you, before I do that, when I say the diatomaceous earth, I'm going to dust some of it on this alocasia poly so you can see it. And you have to be careful with the diatomaceous earth because you actually don't want this to get on your skin. So what I tend to do is to use a cup. Let's see if I can do this within the frame so you can see it. And I just tap it on like that. I try to make sure it doesn't get on me or my hands or anything. Now, I did have another little container that was more like a powder dispenser. But as I mentioned, we're getting settled in a new house and a lot of things are still in our garage and I'm trying to find it. So, in the meantime, I took one little cup that I had gotten from Dollar Tree and I'm just making it work. So, that's that. And then what I'll sometimes do is just come, like how I do when I'm getting flour on a baking pan, and tap the sides, just to make sure it kind of gets all over the top of the soil like that. And one thing that I'll make sure I say now is that when you are dealing with plants in a single space like this, this is a closed off room, make sure that if you're treating your plants for fungus gnats, that you get all of your plants. Because you don't want to be like I just was, where I thought I had sufficiently covered my bases, and then I realized, no, I just saw a fungus net, and there's one plant that I forgot. <laughs> but, like I say, I, I, I can laugh at myself. I get a lot of good laughs from laughing at myself. There's no problem there. Well, yeah, I laugh at it. Life is too short to take too seriously. 
And since I did just water that, it should be okay going for a little while without getting watered. So I'll just give it some time. And again, I'll probably put out either some apple cider vinegar with a little bit of dish soap added. But most effective is that plug zapper too. So I will take, I have a little bug zapper plug that is plugged up in my kitchen that I move around as needed. I need to just order a second one. Um, but I'll be doing that and setting that up. And um, I think for now, that's really the plants that I wanted to show y'all. Um, as I always say, this is Fix It With Fran, where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. Oh, wait, no, I almost forgot. I said good, bad, ugly. Ugly. For the life of me, I am learning that these, um, I don't even know the proper pronunciation, the peppermia plants, or peperomia, we don't get along. This was a variegated teardrop. I have another one that I don't even know. Where is it? I have tried to propagate it. And the crazy thing is, the cutting that I have propagating in water is doing just fine. This one. It's another version. It's a different uh, plant, but still. In water, it's fine. I don't bother it. The one growing in soil. What the what? So, yeah. And I mean, I didn't overwater this one. I, I would wait like a week and some change. I watched my little YouTube videos. People said, don't water it. Like, wait like two weeks. When you think about watering it, wait another day. I did that. And it died. So I'm going to blame the fungus gnats. I don't know. But I tried really hard. <laughs> So I laugh because like people go on and on about these allocation polys and how they don't live and how they're like demon spawn. And then they're like, what did you do? And it's like, mm -hmm. I ordered it sometimes. Like I smile at it a lot. I dust it. So I can grow like the difficult plants, except for orchids when they get there. But then like this one, that's supposed to be like a succulent. Like, what is that? So, keeping it real. This is going back to Home Depot. Like, I'm getting my 398 back. Because it wasn't me. It was this plant. And I will find myself another plant that will accept my love and care and attention. And it's it's not me. It's the plant. Okay? Like, this is this is one of those breakups where I'm just going to say, like, it's not me. It's, it's, it's him. But he need to go. And that's just that. So, <laughs> hopefully you got a laugh out of that. Because I just want to let you know. I mean, I can grow some things. I might be able to start lavender from seed. But I killed this, y'all. I killed this. It's dead, dead. It's dead, dead. Dead, 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 Real dead. But if you didn't already know, most of your big box centers have a plant guarantee. Where if the plant dies, get this, for any reason. You could have killed it. You could have left it outside when it was freezing temperatures in Louisiana or somewhere in the South right now. If you have your receipt, take it back. Get you a new plant. Exchange your plant. Hey. For any reason. And yes, you can take back a pot of dirt with a couple of little dead pieces. I may have done this a few times for some succulents. And it's not to say that you're abusing the policy. Let me be clear. Because have I not bought several plants from several stores? I'm going to be back. Clearly. I'm a loyal customer. <laughs> so, this is just to keep the circle of life going. This is a fair exchange. This plant died. And I tried really hard. So it's like a, a recycling program of sorts, I forget. Oh yeah. But in the meantime, I'm propagating some other little plants. This is a different one that is not dead. It's currently in my guest room, which I will have to show you all in another part of the plant tour, which 
I didn't plan on doing, but hey, let's call this a series of the plant tour. We're going to go around the different parts of the house and you can see the plants. Um, this is a piece of this golden pothos. Sorry. This may be completely off as far as angles, but there's nowhere to go up. But from here, but up. It will get better. So thanks for watching. Um, and I got a marble queen, which started off in this room. And I just felt like they didn't like the light situation. So I moved them to the guest room. The guest room in this house is a south facing window. And what I have noticed, again, I was supposed to be closing out and I came back. Um, and I'm in like some different pothos groups on Facebook and they shared that, you know, a lot of times you'll see pothos advertised as low light plants. And it's not to say that they don't like more light, but I guess the description is that they'll survive in low light situations. But if you do put them in a higher light situation that they actually enjoy, they'll thrive sometimes and actually live and do much better and sometimes even grow at a, a faster rate than they would if they were in a lower light situation. So, you know, follow the cues that your plants give you. Sometimes your plants tell you that they just don't like you and they don't like your house and they don't like the setup that you have. And other times they just flourish and you just go with them because it's like okay um but yeah um i think the only other thing i had that i didn't show y'all was my shirt that i really like today let's see if i can show you it out it's the, <laughs> one of my favorite it's just life right now too one of my favorite sayings before in life was not my circus not my monkeys and this shirt that i got to review says this is my circus and these are my monkeys and it's mom life so yeah that's kind of how i feel right now and a good note to end on um i'm a new mom a mom of one as i mentioned earlier monica is 17 months She's something else. She is active and busy and signing. And her teacher told us today that the more words she learns and the more active she is, the more her personality seems to come out. And I really do see that every day. So this was just me kind of having a moment at the end of the day after we get her down to nap. Not nap sleep because it's nighttime. Um, I gotta go around and after I'm done tending to her, tend to my plants. So this was just my wrap up for the day and wanted to again share with y'all that I do do things around the house with plants that are not just in arrow gardens. Um, share random things with y'all, share some little tips and show you the other things that I'm growing. So thank y'all for watching. Thank you for tuning into this 30 minute now video. So if you have questions for me, please do drop them down in the comments below. If you have things that you want to see, uh, some of the other things that I mentioned or any feedback that you want to give me, please do feel free to share it with me because like I always tell y'all, I feel like I can still learn so much from y'all and I am always open to more information because I feel like that's how we grow. Um, so I'm going to wrap up for real now. This is Fix It With Fran where I talk about all things faith, family, food, and fun. And I do believe that God has given us all gifts and talents that can solve some problem that exists in the world. And if you have yet to find that thing, I pray that you would seek God, seek his faith, pray to understand the gifts and talents that exist in you. And until next time, I pray that you would find that thing and fix it. Thank you so much for watching.